This is Appalling News. I'm Paul Chatto. Let's start with Canada's state media, the Canadian Broadcorping Castration that only 1.3% of Canadians watch. Even fewer will be watching this upcoming TV show, Fluid, Life Beyond the Binary. Popular non-binary Canadian comedian and TV sitcom creator Mae Martin explores the science of gender and sexual fluidity. We don't know how popular comedian Mae Martin is, but non-binary usually translates to not getting any. All kidding aside, Mae is actually a very charming, accomplished stand-up. But we here at Appalling News don't care which way May swings. The description goes on to say, May meets scientists responsible for the latest discoveries, observes and participates in on-camera experiments, encounters sexually fluid non-human life forms, and meets a group of gender non-conforming youth along the way. May shares their reflections through hilarious stand-up from their live stand-up performances. Their performances? Is May sharing the stage with others? In a short clip from the show, sexually indeterminate scientists talk about the wonderful gender fluidity in nature that has nothing to do with humans. But by having PhDs talking about it, May wants us to conflate a connection that doesn't apply. And of course, there's the clownfish. They are mentioned. But the clownfish is actually a terrible example for gender fluidity, because while it can change sex, it only flips between male and female, and not trans non-binary by coastal spectrum, essentially proving the sexual binary. We here at Appalling News just wanted to inform Canadians what your 1.4 billion tax dollars in CBC funding is going towards. But because no one will be watching this show, it will be out of sight, out of f***ing minds. Here in Canada's center of the universe, Toronto, Toronto police overwhelmed by not doing anything about illegal marches, fire bombing of synagogues and rising gun violence is informing the public that they have also given up on dealing with car theft. Canadian police advise homeowners to leave their car fobs inside at the front door of your home inconvenient to steal pouches so armed thieves can steal them more easily without confronting homeowners. In this video, a police spokes weasel says, they're breaking into your home to steal your car. They don't want anything else. But just in case they do, why not leave your large screen TV and jewelry at the front door also? Perhaps provide a hot meal and some beverages? If you don't have the time to make a meal, just call Thieves on Wheels. Not to be completely unfair to the Toronto Constabulary, we can sympathize with the fact that incarceration rates for these kinds of crimes is practically non-existent, and these hooligans are let out on little or no bail to go back and steal more cars. This must be frustrating and demoralizing for our cops. Appalling News will be coming out with a line of key fob racks to make stealing cars easier. Dear appalling news watchers from the UK, it looks like your safe, stodgy, and reliable financial times has been overrun by the woke mob. In this massive and depressing substack piece by James Esses, he outlines the thorough ideological capture of the financial times. We will quote only a few choice examples to avoid encouraging any of you from jumping from an office tower window. A whistleblower from within the FT has provided me with the newspaper's Diversity and Inclusion Toolkit, a document pushed to all members of staff. We took a look at the toolkit supplied to Mr. S's, and it's as frightening as your first bedwetting. It is clear that the toolkit includes methods derived from a clockwork orange. 
Employees are even told that they are living in a time of culture wars and binaries. By binaries, they mean that anyone on the staff who thinks that there are only two sexes will have to go to re-education camp or leave. Ironically, there is absolutely no mention of biological sex or the notion that perhaps women also need to be included in the workplace. This is, of course, understandable, as there are no women working at the Financial Times because it discusses balancing budgets. The FT also includes a diagram in which members of staff can see where they stand on the allyship continuum. Staff are told they are either an adversary or ally, and that if they want to be recognized as true allies, they must interrupt and educate and initiate an organized response. In other words, FT staff are required to spy on each other. Doesn't that sound like a great working environment? The rest of the whistleblower piece includes sections on microaggressions, critical race theory, white privilege, and pronouns. Appalling news? We'll leave it at that and provide a link to James S.'s article. But be warned, watching the Texas Chainsaw Massacre is less scary. Sorry to see the death of the Financial Times. This is Appalling News, and that's the way it is.